got Captain Logan, and look, I got Dan Tory. Hi, guys. Look at this guy. <laughs> We're in New Hampshire, and I'm at Dan Tory Studios. Yes. In New Hampshire. <laughs> Not quite a studio, but we'll go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a studio apartment. Yeah, no, it's bigger than a studio yeah, it is. apartment. Definitely bigger than a studio apartment. Uh, I've been having fun here all week with Dan Tory, and we thought we would make some videos for you guys. We're going to chat about multiple different topics. Uh, Dan hasn't been on the channel much lately, besides for some commentaries, and uh, we haven't just sat down and done anything podcasty. I know. That used to be kind of like our bread and butter together. Like, we used to just, there would be times we'd be recording. Recording and just be like, that's obviously interesting. You want to record a video on it, like on a whim. You should do yeah. that kind of stuff all the time. And they would almost always do better view count wise than the reviews we got together <laughs> the to stuff do. We actually planned. You know, we do we do like a live comic vault. We used to do those live comic yeah. vaults yeah. like every week. That was fun. I miss those. That was fun. I know. I miss going to the comic shop every Wednesday. I miss reviewing that stuff with you. That was a good time when Marvel Now was in its. It's heyday. And I also miss wanting to as much as I used to. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, there's some good stuff going on right now. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But I'm cool waiting now. I used to have to have comments every week. And I'm cool waiting for, essentially waiting for trade at this point. I mean, me I'll too. be more digital. Me too. I mean, there are some things that I'd like to check out, like, right away. Like, Hickman's X-Men, if I had the money, I'd read I that. Know. I'd read that every month. I may make an exception for that. Yeah. I may buy those as they Yeah, because that, I'm just so excited about someone interesting taking over the X-Men again. Like, I am, I'm with you, like you've said this before, I haven't been excited about the X-Men since Bendis, Bendis left. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people are kind of, like, mixed on Bendis. Um, his early stuff is some of the best X-Men comics I've ever It read. is, too. And it's, it's great. In, and to be fair, I've never finished it. Me either. I, don't I, know I, I dropped it. off at some point. I did, too. Yeah. I've got them all, but I don't know what the end of that looks like. Oh, nice. This is not what this video is about. Today, <laughs> Dan and I are going to chat about action <laughs> figures and why we don't collect them the way... We used to. Yes. Um, I think action figure culture has changed a lot in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Ooh, just say about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And when I got into YouTube, there was a big action figure community on YouTube. It was gigantic. Yeah, and there are still people reviewing action figures. And to be fair, I'm not like seeking that out anymore. So maybe that community is still there and I just don't know it. But a lot of the guys that I was looking at are not around anymore. Yeah, it seems like a little bit more of a niche thing than it used to be to me, just as a layman. Because I used to watch some action figure reviews back, back when I used to buy them semi for I was never like as big into action figures as I was like comic books or movies video or, games. Yeah, all that stuff. Um, but I did, when I was a kid, I had like a huge Star Wars 3 and 3 quarter inch collection and all that stuff, so. Yeah. yeah. I think there are still, a, like, there are kind of massive channels that will do toy reviews. Mm. And, uh, you know, the, the, or, they'll, or they'll be uh, kind of like almost advertising things where it's like, this came out, this is cool, you should go get it for your kid, right. or you should go get it for you, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But the But the real detailed, like... Take it out of the box, turn it around, show us the articulation, mm -hmm. show us the paint job. I don't think that's as big and, and, and even lucrative as it used to be. Like, yeah. review spots still around, there's still some guys yeah. doing it. Yeah. Um, but I remember that being pretty pretty heavy in, like, 09, mm. 2010 when I got started. And I mentioned that this isn't just a, a video about YouTube and social media, but uh, I think that's indicative of the the lack of interest in action figures overall. I think it's dropped some as far as like adult collecting. Yeah, I mean, we had a conversation with this over breakfast kind of this morning. Like it was it was either over breakfast or right after we finished. And um, one of the things that I have kind of perceived as far as like my lack of interest in action figures is one, either they're the really nice collector figures that are way too expensive for me to buy a bunch of them. Like I have um, the Hot Toys like Kylo Ren figure and I would like to own more of the Star Wars Hot Toys figures, but like, the Kylo Ren one is the only, like, it's so expensive that that's the only one I can afford. I, like, I saved yeah. up a while to get that. Because I wanted one Star Wars Hot Toys. It's going to be half a paycheck or yeah. a paycheck. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's either that, it's it's extreme. It's either that or the really low quality, like, we were talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe toys and, like, that they sell in, like, Target and Walmart. They've never been great. No, they're, like... Some they, lines are better than others, but yeah. they've never been great. Yeah, like, the Marvel Legends stuff that Hasbro puts out that's based on, like, I think they do movie stuff in that line, too. But they do a lot of, like, comic book stuff, and Marvel Legends figures have always been... As far as, like, the last time I looked at one high quality, I don't know what the recent ones are like, but... I think, you know, they, they still look good, but I think there's a big divide between toys made for children and toys made for adult collectors. Exactly. And I think that line has been there a long time, but I think it's I think that divide is even more chasmous than it used to be. Yeah. The cavernous than it used to be, right? They're all pandering, like, the high-end toys are all, like, kind of, like, pandering to the collector's market, and then, like, the stuff for kids is kind of just junk now. I would argue that the sweet spot was around when I was noticing more toy reviews on YouTube because 
the reason a lot of adults were collecting was because of nostalgia, mm -hmm. and they liked toys when they were kids, but they weren't as detailed as they get now. Exactly. And so they wanted toys that reminded them of their childhood, but that were cool to pose and put on a on a counter and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I think as time has moved on, the adults have gotten less nostalgic about it and more, and it's become like more of a big hobby for the people that are that are really big into it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of. I think that's why that big divide happens. So now the ki a lot of the a lot of the kitty toys are just uh, are are like almost as undetailed as they were in the nineties. And they're not. When we longed for really detailed stuff that we got when we were adults. Yeah, and like I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing, right? Because I don't know, like how this bodes for like the future of people that will be, that may become action figure enthusiasts in, in the future that are kids now yeah like are the, are the figures that they're putting out now worth being nostalgic for and collecting is you know what i mean i think they i think they are yeah in that it's imaginative play and you bring your imagination to it sure so it almost when you're a kid like it would be nice to have like like super great detailed figures that aren't too expensive to buy and to be able to actually play with and right. smack around with each other right. and that kind of thing do right. backflips uh, <laughs> put on a zip line yeah, yeah. you know whatever uh, but when I, when I was a kid I don't remember the quality of the figures as much as I remember like the adventures I had with sure them. absolutely um, yeah I mean maybe we're maybe like it's just a matter of like looking at it with rose tinted glasses because like you exactly. said like like a lot of the toys from like the classic like tenor kenner star wars line for example um those figures that look terrible yeah and they're and like they're so collectible so sought after mm -hmm. um all that kind of stuff so i the, don't know the biggest line the, the best line i can think of of toys of affordable action figures made more for kids than adults is the Playmates 2012 Ninja Turtles line, which yeah. went back to the formula of the 87 show. I they have the Donatello figure from that line. Perfectly, and they're, and they're gorgeous. Yeah, they're they really are. good figures. Yeah. Uh, they were, so when I was a kid, those figures were like 495, mm -hmm. five something. Mm -hmm. um, now, they're more expensive, but they're they're not more than ten, and I think they I think often they were like eight, like they yeah. weren't that much more expensive even than when I was a kid. Right. And the the strategy for Ninja Turtles in '87, which is why that show was so popular, mm -hmm. and, and and it was more about the figures than it was the show. The show was made to sell the figures. Yeah, it was basically an advertisement for the action figures. It was exactly the same strategy as He Man. Yeah. Uh, the their strategy was make a bazillion characters, have a have a figure for every character in the show, but also make up characters with figures that will become characters in the show. That's how right. Bebop and Rocksteady happened. Right. And they did the same thing with 2012. I don't know if you know just how big that line was, oh, but I didn't it know. was just like the 87 show. They oh, made a bazillion that's... figures. They made a bazillion play sets. I've got the blimp. It's great. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, it's, or I should say, I've got. My kids have the blimp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's hanging in their room right now. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and... But I think that sold so well because that's so few and far between now. Mm, yeah, and I think as a Ninja Turtles fan, uh, we don't really get the Ninja Turtles that we want in any capacity except for the toys now. Yeah. Like, that's the only, like, outlet for, like... I mean, the comics, too. I, you can't well, forget about those. Well, and the IDW version uh, is my favorite Yeah, I, I agree. I'm 100% in agreement with that. Um, but, like, the movies, the, 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 the first two, like, reboot movies they put out, I didn't really care for... Um, and then uh, the cartoon show after the 2012, um, was that 2012 when that show launched? Yeah, it was. So the, the show that's on now, I had zero interest in, so I didn't even watch it. I watched the episode. pilot, couldn't get into it. Yeah. Um, Just not my thing. And I don't think the toys for that show are selling as well as 2012 did, but I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Well, and the 2012 show was super popular with kids. Yeah, yeah. I used to see, like, merch and backpacks and stuff that kids had everywhere. And I think the toys had a lot to do with that, yeah. just like it did in 87. So I just bring that up. We're also going to do an Ninja Turtles video, so we don't want this to turn into an Ninja Turtles video. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I, I bring that up to say I don't see a lot of kitty figures, mm -hmm. what I'm going to call kitty figures, figures that are, again, less expensive and meant mostly to actually interact with, mm -hmm. um, that are as good as those. No. I mean, I don't this think Disney has some either. stuff. Like, the Toy Story line that's out right now is, is, is decent. Oh, is it nice? like, like, the, like, there's some okay stuff for kids. Cool. Certainly. But... Again, I just feel like there's there's no middle road. There's this giant chasm where, for the most part, it's not as like like 
not very well detailed figures that are mostly for kids to play with and inordinately expensive and for adults and they were they were getting pretty expensive in 09 2010 that era I was talking about earlier mm -hmm. but I think it's even worse now I think like there are a lot of figures that I would have paid for that I would have paid 20 bucks for back then they're like 30 bucks now yeah I don't know because I used to buy a lot of those Marvel select figures you ever buy any of those they're in like the big bubble packages yes those figures are, were really nice and they were kind of like at least the early ones. They got more articulated as they went along in the line, but a lot of the early ones were kind of just like plastic statues. Yeah. With bases, like really detailed bases and stuff. They were really nice. Um, and those, I think, were like 20 bucks when I used to buy them. I can't even imagine what they cost now. I, I think they're more than that. Yeah, I, I think, think they're at least 25 if not 30 You get And something we're doing a lot now, it just feels like it's too, almost like elitist. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's all, but, but like, but like it's, it's not ex like like uh, um, accessible to very many people besides the the, the really diehard base that's already there. Yeah. Well, we keep making stuff that's like seven or eight figures in a pack for like three hundred bucks or two hundred fifty bucks or whatever it is. Like, oh my god, there's a lot of stuff like that right now. That's insane. Where you just take whatever the ticket price would have been if you sold it by itself. And give no discount whatsoever, and multiply it by however many figures are in the package. Oh. We're seeing a lot of that right now, and so it looks like it's really expensive until you think about how much one would be. But then you go, but then why package it like that? Right. Why not just package them all individually mm -hmm. so that it doesn't look insane? Yeah. Um, have you seen the uh, the Batman animated series and New Adventures of Batman figures? Oh, the DC Direct out ones over the, over, over the last few years. The ones from DC Direct. Yeah. yeah. And they're great, but they're really high. Oh, are they? There's a bat wing for that set. It's like a hundred bucks, oh, and wow. I think I forget how expensive that is. But My numbers might be off, but the, the sticker prices were high enough that, as big of a Batman collector as I am, I was not going near some of that stuff. Well, and the, the, what you were saying brought up a thought in my mind about how, like, as a fan of these things, like back when I was younger, I, of course, didn't have as many like financial responsibilities, but so I had disposable income. But at the same time, I wasn't. You know, I I, I worked I, I worked at like a restaurant, and I could only spend that money. So I didn't make a ton of money, but I was able to afford being a fan of the, the like Spider-Man comic books, the Spider-Man action figures, all that stuff. But now everything's so like comics are so expensive, going to movies is so expensive, buying action figures is so expensive. I kind of can't I like do all that anymore. Like yeah. I can't afford to. Um, so it's a matter of like choosing what aspect of the fandom like I want to keep up with, and of course, like for me, the comic books are like the king, be all, end all. Um, so Same if the com if the comic books are good, like I'm going to spend my money there, Same and here. I'm not going to be able to afford action figures, or you know, yeah. So um, I, I think it's like so weird, like the the prices seem to be going up because like they perceive that fans are willing to pay that much. That's for stuff. part of it, and here's the thing: I'm not even as I'm not even being super critical about this as much as I'm just making observations. Yeah. I think the main reason the prices have gone up is because the demand isn't there like as much as it used to be. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I think Pops cut into it a lot. Mm, that's true. Because I got into collecting for uh, Pops for a while, too. And I collect the Batmans, as you know. Yeah. I'm up to almost 100. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just Batman or Batman characters with bat ears. Yeah. And see, I collected the, the ones based on Marvel Comics, none of the movie stuff, and then I all, because that would be insane and I did uh, Star Wars ones, select ones. I think there are people who used to collect figures that went to Pops and are exclusively buying Pops now. Because they're cheaper. They're cheaper and they're not blind bag. No. That's the thing to keep in mind. They cost what a lot of blind bags do, but you know what you're getting. Yeah. I think that has a lot to do with it. And they're, and, and they're a little bit bigger than the size of a lot of buy, blind bag stuff. So they're, like, they're easy to buy a lot of, and especially if you take them out of the box. And I know a lot of people keep them in the box, which I don't understand because they, they look great I out of the box. I took all mine out of the you box. Also, you yeah. also do that? Yeah, I'm not I don't even keep guy. the boxes. No. Um, because I'm not planning on selling them. I have a few that are really rare um, ones that I kept the boxes for. Like okay, I have my ticks are in the box. Yeah, like I have I have the the hobgoblin one, and that's like a really rare one, so I kept that box. And then I have uh, an E3 exclusive Super Shadow um, one from Sonic. Oh, cool! And he he's one of fifteen hundred pieces, so I kept that box. Oh, I would have too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so I have those boxes, um, and the thing I think with Pops too is they all. Um, are not 
as expensive as figures and they all look good on a shelf together. Yeah. Like, there's so many lines of action figures, like you have to line up the scales and, and stuff. And they all like, stand. And yeah. when they don't, they come with a little piece that you put underneath them so you can stand them. Yeah, over. exactly. So it's like, it's just an easier thing to collect. And they do the artificial scarcity thing, like the exclusives and stuff, which makes the collecting exciting for people. Yeah. You know, it's not like... And they like, do too much of that. Yeah, they do. And that tends to burst bubbles eventually. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, but like the collection aspect of it, I think like, it's a, it's a fine line because doing some of that artificial scarcity does create like excitement and a community around that stuff, which is which is I think cool. Um, it's also been good for brick and mortar, mortar retail. Have you thought absolutely. about that? Yeah, I mean, like you think about like all the stores that have exclusive pops, like even like Fye. It makes you walk into stores you wouldn't. Well, Fye was one of the big ones early on. Yeah, too. but like it, it makes you. But like Walgreens has exclusives. Like, yeah, it makes you. Store? It makes so you weird. walk in. But I mean, they've always had a toy section. Yeah, but you never think that they would have done that. It makes you walk into stores you would never have walked in. Yeah, I mean, like I bought um, a few. A lot like, of Hot Topic exclusives. Some of the best Batman's were Hot Topic exclusives. Yeah, like I I went into Walgreens to buy some of the exclusive Marvel and Star Wars ones because for some reason that they would get all the exclusive exclusive Spider-Mans and exclusive um, prequel Star Wars characters. So like Mace Windu was a Walgreens exclusive. I think Kit Fisto was, um, and then like the Spider Mobile was a was a Walgreens exclusive. I think Black Suit Spider Man was. Cool. Yeah, the Spider Man Spider Mobile one's really cool. Um, but yeah, they they just like do a ton of that stuff, which is which is kind of cool. Um, even like if you're you, I used to order like the Walgreens ones like off their website too, and it was so, super easy. I was surprised. Pop is one of the most genius things anybody ever came up with, which mm. I'm saying retroactively because it's been so popular. Because when they came out, I was like, oh great, cutesy. Yeah, you know, when little, they first came toys. out, I, I think the quality has went up some too because I thought they were really ugly when they first came out, and they've made like the quality of the molds and the the sculpts and everything has gotten a lot. Better. They have, and they've been more diverse about what they'll allow them to look like. Yes. like how different they can make. Yes, them. yeah. They don't all look like repaints of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Mighty Mugs did. Yeah, I was actually gonna mention there was a lot of kind of like pot trying to cash into my craze early on, and they didn't they didn't last at all. Mighty Mugs predates it though. There were things that that oh, attempted really? this before Pop did, and oh. then Pop came in and did it better. Oh, I didn't. know I'm that. pretty sure my, Mighty Mugs either predates them or they were obscure. Oh, okay. And, but uh, Pop and then they were like a overnight success. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's interesting too because um, Funko was mainly like a bobblehead company, I think, and they yeah. used to do like some other stuff, because I have four Spider-Man bobbleheads that I got when I was a kid. I have Spider-Man, Doc Ock, the Lizard, and Green Goblin. That were Funko. And they're Funko. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't even know that until like I got into Pops and I looked at the bottom and I was like, oh, they were like a really obscure company, so yes. um, it's great to see them like blow up in success. At the same time that like, I've heard like Hasbro is really struggling because of how poorly the new Star Wars like toy lines have been selling. Like, you what, if any of you have ever been into a Toys R Us, Star Wars is in just, trouble merch wise. Right it now. was just like, like stuff even from like Force Awakens they couldn't sell was yep. still there. Like when Toys R Us was going out of business, yeah, you know? it's crazy. Well, they made too much of it. Yeah, and like a lot of people liked Rogue One but didn't buy the merchandise. No, I mean like I liked Rogue One as a movie, but I don't think I wouldn't think to collect it. No, me either. And I mean, I'm not a Star Wars guy in the first place. Yeah. But there are Star Wars things that I thought about collecting, and I know right. how. And I know how many of you are going to say Jar Jar Binks in the comments, because <laughs> I because I because I once collected Jar Jar Binks yeah. when I was a kid. I've got to stop bringing that up. <laughs> um, I wanted to collect Ray. Yeah. I loved Ray so much. Yeah, and I was the same way with Kylo Ren when uh, Force Awakens came out because he was yeah. my favorite thing about that movie, and that's why I got the Hot, uh, hot Toys figure. Out. Sure. Um, but yeah, like I think. Star Wars is in trouble, but I guess Hasbro will be able to ride on the, you know, they have the Marvel license too, and those toy seed teams seem to... Well, Hasbro just bought Power Rangers, keep that in mind. Oh, they did? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, Bandai, yep. Bandai finally sold the license, which is nuts. That is crazy, yeah. Wow. Um, or did Hasbro buy Bandai? I think Hasbro bought... Uh, no, they bought Saban is what happened. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. I wonder if... Um, the the Power Rangers show will be continue with the same quality after the corporate buy. <laughs> well, the, well, the hope is that it'll get better. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what. I was and I like about. what I've seen of the new show, but I haven't. Oh yeah. gotten very far in yet. Yeah. What's the I'm new one? To go is it like, it's, is it like military Power Rangers this time or something? No, it's it's called it's called Beast Morphers. Oh. And uh, it's the first time we've had Morphers in the title, and it's the first time we've made as big of a deal out of the Morphin Grid as like a a. a, a a thing oh, interesting. Um, in the mythology, but uh, they're like, they're the suits 
Uh, I'll show you a picture later. Mm. They're they're uh, they're like leathery, oh, and uh, they got really cool masks. They're really different huh. than we've had before. The leather but, uh, is yeah. it like black leather, like Ryan Singer X Men leathery? I'll show it to you. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, they're it's 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 cool. Interesting. But, yeah. Anyway, um, kind of leather. I don't know. I'm not sure how to describe it. I'll show it to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, but but anyway, so like um, I guess for me personally, maybe we should get into just more of like our personal practices. Like I guess I don't collect figures as much as I used to. Uh, because a, I'm doing that pop thing that a lot of people are doing. I, I jumped on that bandwagon. Yeah. Um, with just specifically Batman, mm -hmm. and uh, b the like I said earlier, the toys have just gotten more expensive, mm -hmm. and it's harder. To, like I never collected lines. I just bought things I liked, and even that Same. is just kind of kind of too expensive for me now. Uh, yeah, I was never a big like buy everything in the line for the build a figure kind of person, unless it was like you know something really really cool. And for me personally, I've gotten less interested in buying toys for myself since I've had kids. Yeah. Like, I'd much rather buy toys for my kids. Yeah, of course. Um, and the thing with toys that I that stopped me from collecting them after a while, too, is just because I ran out of space. You run out of space, yeah. Because they take up more room than almost any, like, collectible geeky thing, I suppose. Like, you can collect movies. All you need is a bookshelf for that. Right. You know? Um, you collect comic books. All you need is long boxes that you, like, put in a corner of your house for that. You know? It's not really that, it doesn't really take up that much space. With action figures, I suppose you could put them in a bookcase, but you, like, just lining them up without any sort of, like, riser so you can see all of them, I feel like is not... And that's what I had to do with, with Pop, but, yeah. like, I, I kind of stagger them. Yeah. When I had my Pops on one of the bookshelves in, in my room before I, I, I had to take down my collection for a little while, I had, like, risers so they could, you could see all of them, like, push back in the bookshelf. It was really cool. Um... Let me ask you a kind of out-of-the-box question. Sure. Uh, and so this isn't me making a point so much as seeing if there's a point to be made. <laughs> because the thing I'm about to say is going to sound like a false equivalency. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure that it is, so I want to ask you this question. Okay, okay. Sure. So, so I'm, I'm setting this up because I know as soon as I say this, you're going to say, Cap, that's dumb. <laughs> no. Here is, here is my, here's my question. Okay? Yeah. Is part of the reason, if we're right, and not as many people are collecting figures as they used to, which mm -hmm. I suspect is true, and I suspect that a lot of a lot of kids growing up and becoming teenagers and then young adults are are, are maybe not doing this as much as we did. Mm -hmm. That's the perception I get. I don't know if I'm right about that, but if yeah. that if that's true, yeah, because um, it's not like I'm taking a poll or anything. Right. If that's true, is it partly because collecting in general is for the the uh, for like the kids go, coming up for like the next generation, maybe less of a big deal than it was for us because they're so used to getting s stuff for f not for free but for su with subscriptions and things. Like again, this is where it sounds like a false equivalency. I know we're talking about physical objects versus media, but when I was growing up, everything had to be a hard copy. Mm -hmm. I collect, and, and you were already talking about other things that people don't need a physical version to have anymore, sure. right? So, like, you can be really into comics and really into movies and really into music, and I already don't buy music anymore, right. um, and really into books, et cetera, et cetera, and never own any of it. Does that affect just... The, the mindset of collecting. The idea that, like, like I yeah, can't even get into the idea of collecting because I'm so used to... I feel like the, the, the notion of ownership is changing. It is. And it when is. that happens, do people want stuff cluttering up their house, even if that's the only way you can get it? Is just seeing a picture of it or seeing it on a video good enough? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the concept of ownership, I think people are conditioned being more so towards, like, buying a license or leasing things rather than actual like straight out owning things now because yeah. of all the subscription service like you, services like you mentioned and some of the toy and companies digital download and like you own yeah. it basically yeah and some of the um, toy companies have tried to go with the subscription model like um, Funko has those like um, collector core boxes for Marvel they that's have a good the, point sure. they have like the smugglers bounty box for Star Wars those are the two ones I know of because I bought a few of them because they had really cool exclusive pops in that them. stuff was a big fad for a while and I think people still do it but it's not like a lot yeah they don't do like what is it um, nerd crate or something like that uh, loot crate loot crate that's what it was loot crate yeah um, and it was like a comic the comic bento was one. Oh, interesting uh, I got a free box from them once to uh, to advertise it. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, and also I think one of the things that's stopping like kids and, and even like 
people today collecting toys is like I think the the nature of like how people play is different like video games have so deeply proliferated our culture like you you have an ipad right here you can play some of my favorite games like knights of the old republic you can get from an ipad yeah oh nice i nice. started around here yeah. so like can i tell you real quick yeah yeah because we haven't had this conversation yeah. yet i uh, can't tell you what i named my character what'd you name him low gan <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> it's like I need I need something that sounds like a Star Wars name. Yeah, that does sound like it. That's cool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you you can get like hours and hours and hours and hours out of entertainment from like that nice little Republic game. And how much did it cost you? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. That's half the price of what a action figure costs. Yeah. So it's like I think a lot. That's of, a really good point. I think a lot of kids are growing up not playing with figures as much, just because there are less expensive more entertaining avenues to play things with and play with their friends, you know? Yeah, sure. Like, people play video games online with their friends now instead of maybe going outside and playing with action figures with their friends, possibly. I mean, I don't know a lot of and kids in this generation, but I'm just speculating. I know at least three. Yeah. Because I have children. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I... <laughs> I, uh... I think there's, like with anything, there's there's pros and cons to that. Yeah. Um, I worry about the development of, uh, of imagination and just brain development in general. Sure. When kids aren't just picking up a bucket and imagining it's a spaceship mm -hmm. or a hat or yeah. whatever. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, like, like, there's a lot of great imaginative play that can happen inside of a video game, but there's also something to be said for the simplicity of a single item that can become a thousand different things. Sure, absolutely. And so I worry a little bit about kids not buying action figures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see like how the toy market adjusts to everything becoming digital. Because it's like the one... That form... market does not seem to be in a horrible shape for kids, though. It doesn't seem yeah. like kids are still getting figures, but as we move along, I don't know how true that's that, that's be. That was my question. 20 like, years from now, I don't know if it's going to look exactly. even like it does now. Because, like, you can't... The only way to, like, transform toys into a digital media, media thing is to make it a video game. Or really advanced 3D printing technology. But then it's not just digital anymore. Well, that's then true, you get a physical object, but you can buy it digitally in the first sure, place, sure. and then and then maybe there, maybe that will rejuvenate it. I don't know, maybe, but like I think yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah, that would that's that's, that's an interesting topic of discussion too. Like I, that would that like if three D printing like prolif proliferates and everyone has one in their house, like custom figures, that market will like It'll do rapidly it. expand It'll for collectors. Everybody for sure. everybody will be able to do it. Yeah, exactly. Or at least people like the people that like make mods for video game that know how to code stuff, you mm -hmm. know, and do all the measurements for three D printing and stuff. Yeah, but you'll you'll get to where the to where we'll have like a lot of templates. Mm -hmm. We'll figure out how to make it so that lay people can do it. Lay people people can make Mario levels now. Yeah. With Mario Maker, we will get to the point where you or I, with no artistic know how, <laughs> will be able to sit down and, and, and make an action that's game. going to be a nightmare for the lawyers at all these that, that are trying right? to make big properties like yes these these templates of unauthorized action figures of their characters proliferating and people not even it, it'll almost be like the music thing but then the question is where the like no one's going to want to pay for them will it be a lucrative market you want you, people want to pay for them that's exactly what i was going yeah about. exactly yeah. that's very interesting like i, I it's affecting everything like i started from it's from I'm worried I'm bringing up a false equivalency. It's not. No, like, no I don't think so either. Um, I like I when we had our conversation about this initially, I didn't even think about three D printing like that. It just came to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? If Brandon was here, he would he would bring it up, but he's gonna be upset with me. Yeah. If I don't say three D printing. Yeah, yeah. So I have to bring that up. No, um, that's that's a super interesting like monkey wrench will be thrown into this market eventually. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and not just action figures, like the toy market in general. Yeah, you know, um, it's yeah, it's it's, I, it's the world is changing so fast. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see like how these these companies like adjust and change as it as it you know. And how many of them just won't be able to compete and stick around? Yeah, you know. So like, which do you, do you perceive like which companies you think will will fall faster than others? Like, I don't know enough about toy companies to make that sort of assessment. I don't guess I do either. Like Hasbro is such a juggernaut. I think they'll be fine. 
they own the license to Star Wars, Marvel, everything Disney, pretty much. Uh, yeah, a lot of it's yeah. going to be who has what licenses. Yeah. The big question mark for me right now is is, is Funko. Yeah. Uh, I could see them going the way of Beanie Babies eventually, but then a lot of us thought that would happen by now, and it hasn't. And the thing that's unique with Funkos as opposed to Beanie Babies is, like, Beanie Babies were just artificial scarcity... That's all that the collection market was based on. They were, they're like, they made Beanie Babies. They were also of generic, just generic and animals, not characters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the artificial scarcity was the only reason that collector's market proliferated. And there's a lot of there's a lot of pop that is not selling. That company has gotten so huge they can afford massive loss. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you see that stuff discounted all the time. I, I don't. They don't seem to be, or or they're they've been doing a really good job uh, controlling their the, their own public perception. Oh yeah, because I don't know. Maybe they're not as lucrative as, the, as we think they are. I mean, who knows? But it's hard to say. Yeah. But they look like they can afford massive loss. Yeah, and it's and it's interesting, right? Like, if Disney in the future like stop feels the needs to to stop farming out licenses to things and just buys a toy company or starts their own toy division, like, you know they're going to pull that license from Funko. Like, they are at the mercy of all of these third-party licensees. They are, yeah. Which, that's kind of like, it's like the toy version of, like, Netflix's business model to some degree. Because Netflix, their initial pitch was, you come here for all of the third-party content to stream, and now that they're kind of losing that advantage, they're, they're getting to some trouble. Because, um, like... Right. Because, like, Funko, what, if you take all the licenses away, they have, like, their original characters that literally no one cares about except for Freddy Funko because that's an artificially scarce figure they put out. Like, yeah. Freddy Funko is, like, the king of the rare pops, but it's only because they make so few of them. Nobody's a fan of Nobody is a fan of Freddy Funko, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, so if they lose those licenses eventually, like, I, I don't know what they'll do. Yeah. So I hadn't even thought of that. Just, yeah. the, just, just the question of you know if they lose the licenses, but also if if a bubble bursts and a lot of that's not as uh, not as collectible and as, as as expensive as, as it as it is right now, mm -hmm. is you know worth as much? Is it is that good for Funko or bad for Funko? I guess I don't know because yeah. Funko's not profiting as much from the insane, inordinate scarcity of their product. They, they they charge retail, they charge what it is when it first comes out, and then people go after it. And if somebody pays a lot of money for one, they're not paying Funko. Well, I think if the if the third part, if like the, the secondhand collector's market for uh, Pops goes away, nobody's gonna be rushing around to buy those and they're gonna, not gonna sell out in like three seconds like they do now if it's that's, a super rare one. That's true. You yeah. know? Because most of the people that buy those, that's good those Pops like right away are all scalpers. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, but that's like the way it works most it, of the time. Yeah. Well, and I don't want to say that scalpers completely drive the market, but but like it, they certainly have it's a huge a, part a, of it. effect of it on it. It's a, it's a big part of it. It's a big part of comics too. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Anything that's collectible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were talking to me about how when the latest issue of The Walking Dead, the last one that no one knew was the last issue came out, like your comic shop was kind of like really? mad about it. Yeah. It was it was a big problem for comic shops. Yeah. Too. Because, like, obviously, like, when once everyone hears that the last issue of The Walking Dead is so they one, everybody is everyone wants it. One. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just um, like when Superman died and Captain America died, mm -hmm. and you, know, you had all these people that came out of the woodwork to buy a comic book that had never <laughs> bought one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so and, and scalpers. Yes. Who don't actually read comics, they just... They just sell them on eBay. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody's getting rich doing that. It's like it's like a hobby. It's like I want to get one before anybody else does and see how much I can brag that I that I that I sold one. For. Yeah, exactly. And they're just gonna take that money, turn around, and buy more comics and do the same thing. Nobody's yeah. getting rich doing that. Yeah. I mean, the it's interesting. If anyone to me, is, it's very few. It's interesting how these things move in fads too, because like, yeah. there's always some sort of like hot item that people think they'll be able to like stow away in a closet and then like use it to pay for the kids college fund someday or something like that yeah like they, that was how it was with comics that's how it was with beanie babies that's i don't know if people think that way about pops but and the only people that have managed to do that with collectibles are people who stored away stuff before any before it was a speculative market mm -hmm. and before anybody else was really thinking that way <laughs> yeah so i uh, you you hear that occasionally you hear that story with really rare comics because everybody threw them away that came out in the golden age of the early silver age. Mm. But that's so few and far between. Right. Because comics were viewed as so disposable back then that no one even thought to keep them in good condition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with toys, I feel like the market is very different because, like, people have caught on that toys are so collectible that, like, like you said, some people won't even take them out of the box. Yeah. Which I personally don't understand. 
um, like, I think, the for me, the point of, like, buying figures is to take them out of the box, pose, and display them in, like, a cool way. Yeah, make them look good. But I was also, uh, I also bought into that, that whole idea when I was a kid. Oh, did you? That, like, th- these these things in box are worth more, and someday maybe I'll sell them and get money for them. Or, or yeah. even, but, like, I didn't even plan on selling my stuff, really. It was kind of more just bragging rights, I guess. Like, well, I've got this thing in box. It's worth $200. Isn't it a crazy thing for a person to devalue a thing by 80% by taking it out of a box? Well, and you were exposed to the collector market like very early in life because your dad was like into flea markets and stuff. So and he... also importantly, I grew up, I was growing up before the comic crash happened. Right. So I was, I was nine or 10 during the boom. Yeah. And I, uh, it, when it was a big speculative market and people were, were uh, you know, comic writers and artists were getting rich. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was, so the atmosphere was get everything now. Right. And hang on to it. Right, And exactly. don't open anything. Yeah. And that changed in three or four years, mm-hmm. just very quickly. Mm-hmm. Suddenly stuff that you thought was worth a lot of money in 96 was worth nothing in 98. <laughs> Yeah. It, but also wasn't really worth anything in 96, some of it, you know Yeah, what I mean? and see, like, I'm a little bit younger than you, so, cause, right. so like, I started reading comics in the early 2000s, I think. So, like, uh, by the time I came into comics, it was, it, like, you know, I got into, like, the, the early Ultimate stuff. Like, I was reading, like, a little bit Ultimate Spider-Man at the and beginning. you were reading Marvel when they were finally making a comeback. You were, you yeah, were with there. the quality of the stories, too. Well, yeah. Yeah, but, but also, uh, in in the company be more lucrative exactly. because you were there right after they almost or right after they went bankrupt yeah exactly they did they went bankrupt <laughs> yeah uh, what saved them was well, Ibia Rod <laughs> well that's true but comic wise we're way off topic now but yeah. comic comic wise what saved them was Marvel Knights mm-hmm. and uh, Ultimate to some degree but especially Marvel Knights yeah um, when Kevin Smith coming on Daredevil was a big stunt mm-hmm. and uh, that helped more than I think anybody realizes and gets a credit for yeah and uh, then the then suddenly uh, people were realizing that there were like serious stories that were being told in comics again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you had, I don't know around what year it started, but like in that same vein you had like Garth Ennis' Punisher starting. That was um, also part of the Marvel Knights. Yeah, it was. And then you had the, the Christopher Priest Black Panther run. Yep. Um, what else did they do under that banner? They did a Marvel Knights Spider-Man series. Mark Millar did that like later, but that wasn't great. Yeah. Um, I forget what else was part of that early on, but that stuff yeah. was... was Bigger than people remember it. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, this kind of ties back into our toy discussion. Please. Um, Avi Arad, being the head of Toy Biz at the time, he was the guy that brokered the deal to buy Marvel and um, kind of resurrect them from bankruptcy. That's it's right. it's For better or worse. Yeah. It's so interesting to me that, that like, um, Avi Arad went from a toy executive to, like, a big-time movie cruiser at Sony. It's really interesting. It's really strange. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, any, any final thoughts about uh, just toy collecting and... Um, I think as far as... Do you ever see yourself getting really excited about buying, like, like like six or eight or ten inch figures again? I mean, at this point in my life, like, probably not. Um, just because, one, I, at, at this point, like, I don't have the money to. I might in the future um, when I get, like, my, my, you know, career started and stuff, but... My thing is, like, if I, if there's anything that I want to spend money on collecting, it's going to be comic books. I want to finish my Daredevil collection. Yeah. You know? Like, I have, like, the first, like, five issues of the, sil- like, the Silver Age run of that series and, like, some of the stuff, like, going all, like, I think I, the earliest issue I have other than that is, like, 11. And then, like, I have, like, a bunch in there, like, after that, too, up until, like, 30. And then there's, like, some I gaps. recently got a number two in pretty good shape. Nice. Yeah, I have that one, too. And I've got... The and Electro got a, issue, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I got uh, some early double digits. Oh, nice! Uh, in a collection I just bought. Nice, yeah. So like, uh, that's that's like the collection. That okay, I Dan and I are going to fight to see who can finish that collection. First. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you say so, so when you say complete Daredevil one, how far up are you going? Like, or, or, or are I would you like going to... for a whole first volume, like up through Marvel Knights, or? Um, I w- I have the entire Marvel Knights run in issues. Oh, too. you do. So yeah, because I bought I bought it in like a pack um, from a comic book store that was like selling it for. Really do you cheap. have Bendis and singles? Yes, I do. I okay. have all of it. Okay. Yeah. And I have. I just all recently have, got most of that. I have all of Miller and singles. Um, that like the first initial run and so again. I. Yeah. Um, I have most of Anna Chetty and John Romita Jr.'s run. Um, so oh, okay. So yeah, you're you're in better shape than I am, but not by much because I recently yeah. got most of what you're talking about. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So that like as far as that stuff goes, that's what I want to complete my collection for. 
Um, I'd, I'd much even rather um, get into like video game collecting, to be honest, than action figures. Oh, really? That's yeah. interesting, considering that you buy so much digital now. I do, yeah. Um, but like retro stuff, I really like. Like I still have my N sixty four. I still have my NES at home. I, I didn't know you had any interest in, in keeping cartridges. And stuff. I do have. I don't have a lot, but I have some. Like I. But the thing you like to do more. I of. do. Yeah, that's like, cool. Because I'm a big Legend of Zelda fan, so I have all of the like original Legend of Zelda like releases. Like I have the original game on NES. Zelda 2 on NES, I have uh, Link to the Past on Super Nintendo. Yeah. I don't have any of the portable games because I don't have a Game Boy Color Advance. You just can't play it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I have like all the main home console Zelda games in their original like cartridge and or disc form. So. For me, the only reason I still buy figures when I do is because I have like a place I know they look good. You yeah. know? Because like I've got displays and stuff. Like 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 you and I are in kind of, kind of different places in our life right now. Yeah. Like you don't own a house. No. You don't have like a like a, like a space for the geek stuff, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and so for me, it's like, well, I've got a, I've, I've got my Batcave, and there's a Batman figure that would look really nice in this in the space. Exactly. But other than that, yeah, I'm not. I, I don't see myself ever getting super into it again either. Yeah, and like most of the companies that make toys that I'm really excited about are smaller companies. Like we talked a little bit about NECA before. I think they're a fantastic toy company. Yeah, they're wonderful. Um, and I would love to get those turtles figures if I had a place to pull it up. They've got these dude. these big. What are they? Twelve. 15 inch I, I, don't, I think they're like 15 inches yeah, they're huge they're huge um, that's the first they're thing they're like 80 bucks pop I've seen in a very long time that got me excited about figures but can I but can I say for the size they are yeah and and, and all the like accessories they come with and stuff pretty reasonable I think so too 80 bucks is kind of un, is kind I of understandable so for that when I saw them that was like have you seen the trench coat Raphael no I haven't that's the coolest that is a cool one See, like, those figures got me excited, one, because they were such high quality, they were large, but they were also based on, like, outside of the IDW comics, my favorite iteration of Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Like, the 90 movie is, like, it for me. Yep. You know, I love that. Same movie. here. Tonally, that will always be... Exactly. And the comics are kind of similar to that in tone many, in many ways. Well, and I It's think, a little sillier because they incorporate some of the 80s cartoon stuff and make it a little more serious. Yeah, but, but sometimes they make that stuff real serious. Yeah, yeah, know? exactly. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. The closest thing tonally uh, extra media, I guess when I say extra media, I just mean anything that's not a live action movie, mm -hmm. ever, ever got was the O3 series. Yeah, the O3 series is because Because it, it is, especially that first season, it's totally based real hard on that movie. It is, yeah. And, and Peter and Lear was, stuff too. Peter Lear was behind that. Well, well yes, yeah, yes, which the movie was based on. The but a lot, stuff. but a lot of the writing, like the first couple episodes go back to that movie so hard. It's yeah. It's crazy how many references there are. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, also totally, uh, I wonder if Laird maybe didn't like what they did with the movie even more than Eastman did. Mm. Because Laird was behind that show. Oh. And it it has so much affection, not just for, for, uh, for the comics he did, but that film. Yeah, and I think it's interesting, like, the reverence that has come up for all three of those movies. Like, when I watched the animated Team and Team movie, like, there's, like, props in the background from all three of them. Like, the yeah. Scepter from three. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, someone else remembers that happened? <laughs> because everybody hates that movie, but the Scepter is a pretty cool prop. <laughs> it is everybody cool. wants that prop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so NECA is a company I'm really excited about. Obviously, like, Funko, we talked about at length. Like, they're a cool company. Um, has I used to collect a lot of Hasbro stuff, because I used to buy Marvel Legends. I used to buy... Well, I'm going to start getting their... Pe okay, so I didn't say this, and I yeah. should say this. I still buy Power Rangers. Yeah, it's one of the only figure things, and I guess because I like I collect it with my son and my kids play with it. Yeah. But the the Rangers that I love the designs of, I have to get the figures for. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't even have a place for them. <laughs> I just love them. Well, it's interesting because like Power Rangers has a kind of remained unlike um, Ninja Turtles, I guess, because it wasn't at the, like this at the outset. Like it's kind of just a toy commercial. Like it's always been that way, right? Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's for. Yeah, so like the, the, the half of the fun of watching that show is for the cool like designs that are going to be turned into toys. Yeah, I would imagine, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that's probably why you're a little bit more interested in and that. And then, as right? I always say, then as a kid, you get the toys, and then you add substance. Right. And I think Marvel kind of does that with their movies. Like, I haven't seen the new Spider-Man movie yet, but he has, like, 87 suits in that movie, clearly, so they can, like, just make action figures out of them. But here's what's so weird about that. You say that, but then, like... I don't know if it's just because I don't think a lot of the products they make are great, but I never yeah. feel like they exploit them properly. Oh, really? They'll do all these things that look like they'd make great toys, that I never feel like they're exploited right. See, like, I don't... And the toys are never super popular. You yeah. never see a bunch of people buy them. The, the Marvel figures do actually sell really well. Do they really? Yeah, they do. I just don't see them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they do sell really well. All right. Um, but... Well, what do I know? <laughs> 
But like, do you know how like all in every Marvel movie, like there's a dip, like there's a different design for every character. There's not a consistent design for them between every movie. So they can just make a new action figure out of them. Yeah. Like Black Widow's hair is different. Or uh, Captain America has a it different suit. It never occurred to me that that had anything. I don't think merchandising when I look at the Marvel movies. Oh, really? And that's, yeah. that's all I think about when I at see all. like how well their suits change. At like, all, like, because... Spider-Man suits in that movie. Because I don't see as much of it as I expect to, and really? I really didn't think anybody was buying it. Oh, interesting. Like, outside of Funko and stuff. Yeah. Um, but and big collector stuff, mm-hmm. you know, like like uh, they'll, they'll be like those those like replica uh, like masks and the gauntlet and stuff like mm-hmm. the uh, helmets and stuff. Yeah, so that stuff is awesome. Yeah, and, like uh, the, I think it's they make those under like the Marvel Legends banner because they're like more collector stuff. I think like, yeah, the Hasbro stuff they put out because they made like Obviously, an Iron Man helmet. Yes, and they made an Ant Man. There's an Ant Man one, yeah. and it's awesome. Yeah. And like I. I obviously am not as big of a fan of the design of the gauntlet they did as the combo gauntlet, mm-hmm. but if I had if, if if I had an extra hundred bucks laying around, I'd buy it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. <laughs> it is cool, and I think like when you put your hand in it, it like it has like um, sensors or like pulleys or something that like makes the gauntlet like close its hand like. Like, it's not just Does like, it really? Yeah, it's not just like a, a still love. Like, I didn't it's, know it's, that. It, the fingers move and all. I that. knew it had lights and sounds and stuff, but I didn't know it had like almost a hydraulic system. Oh yeah, the fingers move. It's cool. cool. Yeah. Interesting. Now, Captain now I want like, one I want more. <laughs> well, hundred dollars sounds sounds more fair for that. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, should we go ahead and end this off here? You think? Uh, or, yeah, I was just stuff you want to say. Uh, go ahead. The only thing was, I was saying Hasbro. Like, I don't collect as, any of their stuff anymore. I haven't bought a Marvel Select figure in a long time, but I do. I did like those figures because they were like, were those like DC Direct in that like Marvel made them. I think so. Um, Marvel Legends is not that way, right? Right, Hasbro. Hasbro, Hasbro makes, makes them, yeah. yeah. So I think Marvel Select, is it, you know what, you know what, I think it's called Select, am I right about this? Is it Diamond, and Diamond has Diamond Select, and so Marvel yes, Select that's is Diamond, that's, that's what exactly it is? what it is. Okay, yeah. that, yeah, you're that right. makes sense. Because mm-hmm. I remember on the packages they used to have Diamond on the That's what it is. So yeah. it's as close to directly from Marvel as you're going to get, because right. Diamond makes it. Yeah, maybe that's how the DC figures, DC Direct figures work, too. I'm not I sure. don't know. Yeah. Maybe so. Um... But I, I used to buy some of the DC Direct figures back in the day, too. I don't really buy those anymore. Um, well, and something I meant to mention earlier, uh, at, the, at the risk of making this video longer, yeah. is I I also don't see even even the the you know adult collector figures as much at comic shops. Mm. And that's part of what makes me think that there's not the demand for them there used to be, is there are shops that used to have like whole sections for figures mm. that aren't doing that anymore. Yeah. Um, but you can say, but you could, but it is possible that they're, I still don't think they're as popular as they used to be. But I don't have anything but anecdotal evidence. So it's possible that they are, yeah. and people are just buying like directly from the distributor now. Yeah. And not bothering going into a store because they can get them online. I don't know. True. I mean, I think it's kind of like, the, the there's like a for example a big chain of comic book stores in New England called Newbury Comics. They got their start on Newbury Street in Boston, and they've kind of like opened stores all around New England. And um, is that the one we're going to, or is there a no? It's, store? This is this is an independent store. I'm going to take you to. Okay, cool. It's like a real comic book store. <laughs> um, oh, really? You don't like Newbury? No, I like them, but it's like they they're catering to not just a comic book. Dan Tory called Newbury Comics not a real <laughs> comic <laughs> store shop. Like the thing the thing about Newbury Comics is like they do have comic books there. But it's like, they don't take care of them well. They're oh. all like in those like bookshelf displays. They're not bags and boards. They're like, like bent and stuff. Spinner racks without bags and boards. That's they don't have spinner racks. Oh okay. Um, okay. But they're on like bookshelves, so like the books like bend over like this, and the spine gets damaged. They don't bag and board a lot of stuff. Um, you can get pulls there. I've never tried to get a pull there, but they also sell like just generic geek items. And um, that's what their bread and butter is really. It's like the t-shirts and the like little merch like. Pooshy cat when things I, and stuff. When, when I, when and I they, hear and they're, generic geek items, the yeah. first thing that comes to my mind is just a wall of pocket protectors. That's yeah. like all I imagine. <laughs> it's just pocket but protectors. But you know, like that, like generic, like merch stuff. It's like, oh, this will appeal to the demographic demographic of people who go in the store, like that stuff. Yeah. Um, and and their old toy section where I used to buy a lot of my Marvel Select figures is all pops now. So, I mean, they still have some stuff, but it's mostly pop stuff. Um, so they've kind of, that's been like supplanted to your point you were talking about earlier. Yeah, so then the question is like, did we have people that were going into comic shops finding out about those and then starting a collection? Mm-hmm. Or was it always the same guys and are they still <laughs> around and are they just buying directly from the distributor? Yeah. I, I suspect there's a little bit of that first thing going on. I think so. It's, I don't know, for me personally too, it's just so hard to justify like 
spending that much money on toys and displaying them and it's it's like collecting toys is a lot of work because you have to like desk them you have to well, like, I know it you have to make sure you have to make sure they they're standing if they, one of them falls over they fall over like dominoes and you have to set the whole thing up again comic books I just put bags of them put it in a little box and I'm fine I'll tell um, you though I have the same problem with retro video games man yeah. like they, they, they are a lot of hockey too and I yeah. uh, like I like I have you know, ten or fifteen uh, classic systems all sitting next to each other, and they get real dusty. Like they do, and especially for the cartridge-based systems, you have to clean them. Otherwise, like it damages the pins. They'll of the stop working. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, we could. I mean, we could do a whole video on uh, game collecting too, because mm -hmm. that could. has gotten very different. It has gotten very different, especially. Um, we're gonna make nothing but collecting videos. <laughs> yeah. this is what we're gonna do. No one's gonna care, but that's yeah. what we're gonna do. Especially with like GameStop, um, because they've been doing so terribly. Their stock, like they're basically like penny stock now. That's right. Um, their strategy to get out of that rut is to go into retro video game collecting. I don't think it's gonna save them. Uh, it's not because a it's too little, too late. B there's a lot of other places doing it better than they are. C the retro video game market. We're just gonna make that video right now. The retro video <laughs> game market is this is a thing I actually keep up with some. Yeah. The, the, I don't talk about it on the channel much, but it's a thing I actually mm -hmm. keep, keep, keep up with. Because you and Jason do that stuff together. We do, and it's the for whatever reason. Like I don't watch a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. But those are the videos I like to watch on retro video game collecting. Uh huh. And uh, but but then I uh, there is there's the fact that the there's a bubble that looks like it is about to burst on that also. Really? Like like uh, game like retro video game collecting uh, got so huge because of a lot, especially because of a lot of YouTube collectors making videos about that stuff. That then you know somebody somebody would see like a Metal Jesus video and then everybody would go after the thing he just talked about <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he's so popular. Yeah. And uh, there's so a lot of the people that want certain things have them now. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot. So when I say the bubble is bursting, what I mean is there's a lot of stuff that's going down in value now. In and a very niche market, which is which is good for collectors, yeah. Um, but not as good for collectors that bought stuff to resell. Mm. Uh, but anyway, so there's that, and then but the biggest thing with GameStop, the D, the D, and this is the big, I should have made it A. This is the this is the big <laughs> thing. Last I heard, what GameStop is talking about doing is not putting retro games in the stores they have already. It's opening exclusively retro game stores, bad idea. which is insanity. It's like what they tried to do. Have you ever been in one of those Think Geek stores? No. Because it's that we have them at one of the malls near my hometown where I grew up. Oh, it's, really? It's um, the stores are owned by GameStop, but it's it's basically like. A comic book store, like I was describing Newbury Comics to you, without the comics in it. Oh, really? It's all just like geek merch stuff, and I like stuff just sits on the shelves there. Like I would go in there and buy stuff sometimes because I like that stuff. But yeah, like, it's too niche. Yeah, there's not enough consumers that want this stuff to support an entire store. Just for you it. need a bread and butter. Yeah, you know, you yeah. gotta put coffee in there or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, thanks everybody for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed our video about. Uh, action figure collecting, and many other things. Yeah, we wandered a little bit, but I think it was all, like, related enough. I, th I hope people enjoyed it. <laughs> I think what we discovered is how intertwined so many markets are because of how much stuff is changing. There's so many, like, products they're trying to cater to the niche market that we belong to, and for us personally, it's like, oh, like I mentioned you before, like, as, as a niche consumer that's a huge fan of this stuff, do I spend my money on plastic versions of these figures that are just going to sit on a shelf, or do I spend money on the stories about these characters that made me love them in the first place? You yeah. know? It's like, duh, for me. It's I no brainer. I couldn't believe how hard it was to talk about this topic and or, or to talk about action figures and not wind up talking about everything else. Yeah. Well, of course. I mean, like, you know, the, the comic discussion comes up naturally just because of... Who we we think this and the, we think this bubble's going to burst with Funko, similar to the way that it happened with comics. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but I'm I'm mostly nervous about it, but I'm wondering why it hasn't happened yet. Me too. That's my big thing. They, that should have happened by now. I it's agree. Weird. It's super weird. And it's really easy to go. Well, if it hasn't happened now, mm -hmm. will it? And it will. I feel like it's got to, but it's so weird that it hasn't yet. It's no. really weird. I'm very surprised that it's going on for as long as it is, but. Guys, thanks again for watching. <laughs> uh, Dan and I are going to do some more stuff for you. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you again soon. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Dan. See you, folks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>